Pure Land Buddhism Chinese, Jing Tu Zong Pinyin, Jing Tu Zong, Japanese, Jing Tu Fojiao Jodo Bukkyo, Korean, Hongul, Jeng Tu Zong RR, Jeng Tu Zong, Vietnamese, Tin Du Tong, also referred to as Amitism in English, is a broad branch of Mahayana Buddhism and one of the most widely practiced traditions of Buddhism in East Asia. Pure Land is a tradition of Buddhist teachings that are focused on the Buddha Amitabha. The three primary texts of the tradition, known as the Three Pure Land Sutras are the longer Sukhavativyuha Sutra, Infinite Life Sutra, Amitayardhyana Sutra, Contemplation Sutra, and the shorter Sukhavativyuha Sutra, Amitabha Sutra. Pure Land-oriented practices and concepts are found within basic Mahayana Buddhist cosmology and form an important component of the Mahayana Buddhist traditions of China, Japan, Korea, Tibet, and Vietnam. The term Pure Land Buddhism is used to describe both the Pure Land soteriology of Mahayana Buddhism, which may be better understood as Pure Land traditions, or Pure Land teachings, and the separate Pure Land sects that developed in Japan from the work of Honen. Pure Land Buddhism is built on the belief that we will never have a world which is not corrupt, so we must strive for rebirth in another plane, referred to as the Pure Land. Topic: Early History. History in India The Pure Land teachings were first developed in India, and were very popular in Kashmir and Central Asia, where they may have originated. Pure Land Sutras were brought from the Gandhara region to China as early as 147 CE, when the Kushan monk Lokaksima began translating the first Buddhist sutras into Chinese. The earliest of these translations show evidence of having been translated from the Gandhari language, a Prakrit. There are also images of Amitabha with the bodhisattvas Avalokiteshvara and Mahasthamaprapta, which were made in Gandhara during the Kushan era. In the Buddhist traditions of India, Pure Land doctrines and practices were disseminated by well known exponents of the Mahayana teachings, including Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu. Pure Land schools arose because of the belief that humans were becoming incapable of Dharma, emphasizing that humans needed help from another power, that power being Amitabha Buddha. Although Amitabha is honored and venerated in Pure Land traditions, this was clearly distinguished from worship of the Hindu gods, as Pure Land practice has its roots in the Buddhist ideal of the Bodhisattva. Topic: <laughs> Pure Land Sutras. The three principal Pure Land Sutras are the longer Sukhavadivyuha Sutra, Amitayardhyana Sutra, and the shorter Sukhavadivyuha Sutra. These sutras describe Amitabha and his pure land of bliss, called Sukhavati. Also related to the pure land tradition is the Pratyutpana Samadhi Sutra, which gives an early description of the practice of reciting the name of Amitabha as a meditation method, although it does not enumerate any vows of Amitabha or the qualities of Sukhavati. Bodhisattvas hear about the Buddha Amitabha and call him to mind again and again in this land. Because of this calling to mind, they see the Buddha Amitabha. Having seen him they ask him what dharmas it takes to be born in the realm of the Buddha Amitabha. Then the Buddha Amitabha says to these bodhisattvas, If you wish to come and be born in my realm, you must always call me to mind again and again, you must always keep this thought in mind without letting up, and thus you will succeed in coming to be born in my realm. In addition to these sutras, many other Mahayana texts also feature Amitabha, and a total of 290 such works have been identified in the Taisho Tripit a.k.a. Andrew Skilton writes that the descriptions of Sukhavati given in the Sukhavativyuha Sutras suggests that these descriptions were originally used for meditation. This land, called Sukhavati or blissful is described in great detail, in a way that suggests that the sutras were to be used as guides to visualization meditation, and also gives an impression of a magical world of intense visual and sonorous delight. In the Infinite Life Sutra, Gautama Buddha begins by describing to his attendant Ananda a past life of the Buddha Amitabha. He states that in a past life, Amitabha was once king who renounced his kingdom, and became a monastic bodhisattva named Dharmakara. Dharma storehouse. Quote closing parenthesis dot. Under the guidance of the Buddha Loksvararaja, world sovereign king, innumerable Buddha lands throughout the ten directions were revealed to him. 
After meditating for five eons as a bodhisattva, he then made a great series of vows to save all sentient beings, and through his great merit, created the realm of Sukhavati. Ultimate bliss. This land of Sukhavati would later come to be known as the Pure Land Chinese, Jingtu in Chinese translation. Early history in China The Pure Land teachings first became prominent in China with the founding of Donglin Temple at Mount Lu Chinese, Lu Shan by Huiyuan Chinese, Wei Yuan in 402. As a young man, Huiyuan practiced Taoism, but felt the theories of immortality to be vague and unreliable, and unrepresentative of the ultimate truth. Instead, he turned to Buddhism and became a monk learning under Daoan Chinese, Daoan. Later he founded a monastery at the top of Mount Lu and invited well-known literati to study and practice Buddhism there, where they formed the White Lotus Society Chinese. By They accepted the shorter Sukhavadivyuha Sutra and the longer Sukhavadivyuha Sutra as their standards among the Buddhist sutras, and they advocated the practice of reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha in order to attain rebirth in the western pure land of Sukhavati. The Mount Lu is regarded as the among the most sacred religious sites of the Pure Land Buddhist tradition, and the site of the first Pure Land gathering. The Pure Land teachings and meditation methods quickly spread throughout China and were systematized by a series of elite monastic thinkers, namely Tanluan, Daochou, Shandao, and others. The main teaching of the Chinese Pure Land tradition is based on focusing the mind with mindfulness of the Buddha SKT, through recitation of the name of Amitabha Buddha, so as to attain rebirth in his Pure Land of Sukhavati. Early Pure Land as practiced in China by Tanluan is described as follows. Tanluan describes the visualization of Amitabha and Sukhavati in minute detail. He regards the invocation of the Buddha's name as a spell working in the inconceivable realm, and he describes how the realized Pure Land devotee manifests human bodies in all times and places. His knowledge of Buddhism is deep. He uses over 20 sutras and more than a dozen sastras to argue his case. There are 81 references to the Mahaprajñaparamitapadesa alone, and 21 references to the Chinese Madhyamaka Master Sengchao, none of them trivial or out of place. At a later date, the Pure Land teachings spread to Japan and slowly grew in prominence. Genshin caused Fujiwara no Michinaga to accept the Pure Land teachings. Honan established Pure Land Buddhism as an independent sect in Japan known as Jodo Shu. Today Pure Land is an important form of Buddhism in Japan, China, Korea, and Vietnam. Pure Land schools make up almost 40% of Japanese Buddhism practitioners with the most temples, second to Chan schools. These schools were influenced by the thought that humans could no longer understand the Dharma by themselves. The Pure Land Contemporary Pure Land traditions see Amitabha expounding the Dharma in his Buddha field SKT, Buddhicetra, or Pure Land, a region offering respite from karmic transmigration. Amitabha's Pure Land of Sukhavati is described in the longer Sukhavativyuha Sutra as a land of beauty that surpasses all other realms. It is said to be inhabited by many gods, men, flowers, fruits, and adorned with wish-granting trees where rare birds come to rest. In Pure Land traditions, entering the Pure Land is popularly perceived as equivalent to the attainment of enlightenment. Upon entry into the Pure Land, the practitioner is then instructed by Amitabha Buddha and numerous bodhisattvas until full and complete enlightenment is reached. This person then has the choice of returning at any time as a bodhisattva to any of the six realms of existence in order to help all sentient beings in samsara, or to stay the whole duration, reach Buddhahood, and subsequently deliver beings to the shore of liberation. In Mahayana Buddhism, there are many Buddhas, and each Buddha has a pure land. Amitabha's pure land of Sukhavati is understood to be in the western direction, whereas Aksobhya's pure land of Abharati is to the east. Though there are other traditions devoted to various pure lands, each of pure lands except Amitabhas is called by the different name without calling it pure land, and Amitabhas is by far the most popular. Few pure land Buddhists have practiced the harder Pratyupana Samadhi. Sutras of pure land Buddhism preach that Dharma brings effects equally without distinction of saints or the imperial family. This is one of the reasons that became most popular among the populace. 
In addition, it references that benevolences expecting the reward do not have good deeds, and suggests that good and evil may be interchanged in the difference of one's situation. Hence, it was thought that menial persons could be released from the underworld like hell and arrive at pure land easily depending on their good deeds in one's lifetime. However, because this teaching includes extremely difficult subject matter, various denominations or sects appeared over the interpretation. Topic. Meditation Charles Luck identifies three meditation practices as being widely used in Pure Land Buddhism. Topic. Mindfulness of Amitabha Buddha Repeating the name of Amitabha is traditionally a form of mindfulness of the Buddha SKT, This term was translated into Chinese as Nianfo Chinese Nianfu Japanese Nenbutsu, by which it is popularly known in English. The practice is described as calling the Buddha to mind by repeating his name, to enable the practitioner to bring all his or her attention upon that Buddha see, Samadhi. This may be done vocally or mentally, and with or without the use of Buddhist prayer beads. Those who practice this method often commit to a fixed set of repetitions per day. According to tradition, the second patriarch of the Pure Land School, Shandao, is said to have practiced this day and night without interruption, each time emitting light from his mouth. Therefore, he was bestowed with the title, Great Master of Light, Chinese, Guang Ming Da Shi by Emperor Gaozong of Tang. In Chinese Buddhism, there is a related practice called the Dual Path of Chan and Pure Land Cultivation which is also called the dual path of emptiness and existence. Quote, As taught by Nan Y. Chin, the name of Amitabha is recited slowly, and the mind is emptied out after each repetition. When idle thoughts arise, the name is repeated again to clear them. With constant practice, the mind is able to remain peacefully in emptiness, culminating in the attainment of samadhi. Topic. Pure Land Rebirth Dharani Repeating the Pure Land Rebirth Dharani is another method in Pure Land Buddhism. Similar to the mindfulness practice of repeating the name of Amitabha, this Dharani is another method of meditation and recitation in Pure Land Buddhism. The repetition of this Dharani is said to be very popular among traditional Chinese Buddhists. It is traditionally preserved in Sanskrit, and it is said that when a devotee succeeds in realizing singleness of mind by repeating a mantra, its true and profound meaning will be clearly revealed. Namo Amitabhaya Tathagataya Tadiatha Amrit Ad Bhavi Amra Siddhambhavi Amravikran Amtavakratagamini Gagana Kurti Svahatha Chinese use a version of this Dharani that was transliterated from Sanskrit into Chinese characters, called the Mantra for Birth in the Pure Land. Chinese, Sheng Jing Tu Zhou Pinyin, Sheng Jing Tu Zhou, also known as the Pure Land Rebirth Dharani, Wang Sheng Jing Tu Sheng Zhou, Wang Sheng Jing Tu Shen Zhou. The translation exists in various forms and this is one commonly used. Topic. Visualization methods Another practice found in Pure Land Buddhism is meditative contemplation and visualization of Amitabha, his attendant bodhisattvas, and the Pure Land. The basis of this is found in the Amitayardhyana Sutra, in which the Gautama Buddha describes to Queen Vedihi the practices of thirteen progressive visualization methods, corresponding to the attainment of various levels of rebirth in the Pure Land. The first of these steps is contemplation of a setting sun, until the visualization is clear whether the eyes are open or closed. Each progressive step adds complexity to the visualization of Sukhavati, with the final contemplation being an expansive visual which includes Amitabha and his attendant bodhisattvas. According to Inagaki Hisao, this progressive visualization method was widely followed in the past for the purpose of developing samadhi. Visualization practices for Amitabha are also popular in Shingon Buddhism as well as other schools of Vajrayana. Going to the Pure Land Practitioners claim there is evidence of dying people going to the Pure Land, such as Knowing the time of death, Yu Ji Shi Ji some prepare by bathing in Nianfo. The Three Saints of the West Shi Fang San Sheng Amitabha and the two Bodhisattvas, Avalokiteshvara on his right and Mahasthamaprapta on his left, appear and welcome the dying person. 
Visions of other Buddhas or Bodhisattvas are disregarded as they may be bad spirits disguising themselves, attempting to stop the person from entering the Pure Land. Records of practicing Pure Land Buddhists who have died have been known to leave sarira, or relics, after cremation, the last part of the body to become cold is the top of the head posterior fontanelle. In Buddhist teaching, souls who enter the Pure Land leave the body through the fontanelle at the top of the skull. Hence, this part of the body stays warmer longer than the rest of the body. The verses on the structure of the eight consciousnesses Chinese, Ba Shi Gui Ju Bu Zhu reads, To birth in saints the last body temperature in top of head, to diva in eyes, to human in heart, to hungry ghosts in belly, to animals in knee cap, to the hell's realm in soul of feet. See also, Foa. The dying person may demonstrate some, but not necessarily all, of these evidences. For example, his facial expression may be happy, but he may not demonstrate other signs, such as sharira and dreams. When a person dies, at first, good luck at the underworld, is prayed for the dead person. The next, the family is in mourning during 49 days till the dead person's reincarnation pure land sects may say, till achieving pure land. It is thought that the great sinner transmigrates to a beast or a hungry ogre without being able to go to the pure land. Topic. Variance between traditions In Tibet, which has a tantric culture, the original Indic general orientation of seeking rebirth in the pure land of any deity was retained. Tibetan practitioners may also visualize themselves as a Buddha. By contrast, the Chinese traditions are oriented towards seeking assistance from an other Amitabha Buddha, which is outside the self, and may consider the Western pure land to exist only in the mind. Topic. Indian Buddhism Regarding Pure Land practice in Indian Buddhism, Hajime Nakamura writes that as described in the Pure Land Sutras from India, mindfulness of the Buddha is the essential practice. These forms of mindfulness are essentially methods of meditating upon Amitabha Buddha. Andrew Skilton looks to an intermingling of Mahayana teachings with Buddhist meditation schools in Kashmir for the rise of Mahayana practices related to Buddhanismurti, mindfulness of the Buddha. Great innovations undoubtedly arose from the intermingling of early Buddhism and the Mahayana in Kashmir. Under the guidance of Sarvastivadin teachers in the region, a number of influential meditation schools evolved which took as their inspiration the Bodhisattva Maitreya. The Kashmiri meditation schools were undoubtedly highly influential in the arising of the Buddhanismurti practices, concerned with the recollection of the Buddhas, which were later to become characteristic of Mahayana Buddhism and the Tantra. Topic. Chinese Buddhism Pure Land Buddhism was one of the two main schools of monastic Buddhism that persisted, the other being Chan. Pure Land Buddhism is considered to be both monastic and lay. Pure Land practice never became a sect of Buddhism separate from general Mahayana practice. In particular, Pure Land and Zen practice are often seen as being mutually compatible, and no strong distinctions are made. Chinese Buddhists have traditionally viewed the practice of meditation and the practice of reciting Amitabha Buddha's name, as complementary and even analogous methods for achieving enlightenment. This is because they view recitation as a meditation method used to concentrate the mind and purify thoughts. Chinese Buddhists widely consider this form of recitation as a very effective form of meditation practice. Historically, many Buddhist teachers in China have also taught both Chan and Pure Land together. For example, in the Ming dynasty, Hanshan Deking and many of his contemporaries advocated the dual practice of the Chan and Pure Land methods, advocating mindfulness of Amitabha to purify the mind for the attainment of self-realization. <laughs> Tibetan Buddhism Tibetan Pure Land Buddhism has a long and innovative history dating from the 8th-9th centuries, the era of the Tibetan Empire, with the translation and canonization of the Sanskrit Sukhavadivyuha Sutras in Tibetan. Tibetan compositions of Pure Land prayers and artistic renditions of Sukhavati in Central Asia date to that time. Tibetan Pure Land literature forms a distinct genre and encompasses a wide range of scriptures. Aspiration prayers to be born in Sukhavati. Tib, Bde Sman, commentaries on the prayers and the sutras, and meditations and rituals belonging to the Vajrayana tradition. 
The incorporation of foa mind transference techniques in pure land meditations is textually attested in the 14th century in the Standing Blade of Grass Tib Fuba Jagti Shugma, a terma text allegedly dating to the time of the Tibetan Empire. A good number of Buddhist treasure texts are dedicated to Amitabha and to rituals associated with his pure land, while the wide acceptance of foa in Tibetan death rituals may owe its popularity to pure land Buddhism promoted by all schools of Tibetan Buddhism. There are many treasure texts associated with Tibetan pure land Buddhism and Turton Longsal Nyingpo, 1625 of Katak Monastery revealed a terma on the pure land. This terma entailed foa during the bardo of dying, sending the mind stream to a pure land. Gayatral B, 1924, in a purport to the work of Karma Chagma Wiley, Karma Chags Med, Florida. 17th century, rendered into English by B. Allen Wallace Chagme et al., 1998, p. 35, states It is important to apply our knowledge internally. The Buddha attained enlightenment in this way. The pure lands are internal, the mental afflictions are internal. The crucial factor is to recognize the mental afflictions. Only by recognizing their nature can we attain Buddhahood. <inaudible> <inaudible> Japanese Buddhism In Japanese Buddhism, Pure Land teachings developed into independent institutional sects, as can be seen in the Jodo Shu, Jodo Shinshu, Yuzu Nembutsu Shu, and Ji Shu. The term used in the Japanese culture differentiates from the common Chinese and Indian theologies, as the term was used before Buddhism had arrived in Japan as an alternate expression for heaven. The majority of the important schools of Japanese Buddhism developed in the Middle Ages, between the 12th and 14th centuries. However they were mostly influenced by the Tendai school Chinese, Tiantai in the 6th century as their founding monks were all trained originally in the school. Its teachings were based on the Lotus Sutra and Mahayana Nirvana Sutra, encompassing a wide range of teachings and eclectic practices of austerities. Strong institutional boundaries exist between sects which serve to clearly separate the Japanese Pure Land schools from the Japanese Zen schools. One notable exception to this is found in the Obaku Zen school, which was founded in Japan during the 17th century by the Chinese Buddhist monk Ingen Chinese Yinyuan Longqi. The Obaku school of Zen retains many Chinese features such as mindfulness of Amitabha through recitation and recitation of the Pure Land Sutras. Upon encountering Japanese Pure Land traditions which emphasize faith, many Westerners saw outward parallels between these traditions and Protestant Christianity. This has led many Western authors to speculate about possible connections between these traditions. However, the cosmology, internal assumptions, and underlying doctrines and practices are now known to have many differences. Topic. See also Faith in Buddhism Ippon Transfer of merit Vayuha Pure land Topic. Reference Topic. Further reading Amstutz, Galen the Politics of Pure Land Buddhism in India, Newman 45 1, 69-96 via JSTOR subscription required Inagaki, Hisao, Trans, 2003, The Three Pure Land Sutras PDF, Berkeley, Namada Center for Buddhist Translation and Research, ISBN 1-886439-18-4, archived from the original PDF on May 12, 2014 Muller, F. Max, Trans Buddhist Mahayana Texts Vol. 2, The Larger Sukhavati Vayuha, The Smaller Sukhavati Vayuha, The Vagratika, The Larger Pragna Paramita Rideya Sutra, The Smaller Pragna Paramita Rideya Sutra. The Amitayar Dhyana Sutra, translated by J. Takakusu. Oxford, Clarendon Press 1894. Pure Land Sutras Shi Wuling, In One Lifetime, Pure Land Buddhism, Amitabha Publications, Chicago 2006. ISBN 9781599753577 Hakias, Georgios, Luminous Bliss, A Religious History of Pure Land Literature in Tibet, with an annotated English translation and critical edition of the Orgyan Gling Gold Manuscript of the Short Sukhavadivuha Sutra. 
Hawaii, University of Hawaii Press 2013. 1. Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 1999. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 1, A General Survey. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 1, 91-103. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2001. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 2, The Earliest Period, Chapter 3, Wei Yuan of Mount Lu, and Chapter 4, The Translation of Texts Spurious Scriptures. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 3, 241-275. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2002. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 5, The Early Pure Land Faith, Southern China, and Chapter 6, The Early Pure Land Faith, Northern China. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 4, 259-279. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2000. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 7, Tan Luan. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 2, 149-165. Archived from the original Kenneth Tanaka, 1989. Bibliography of English language works on Pure Land Buddhism, primarily 1983 to 1989. Pacific World Journal, New Series, Number no. 5, 85 to 99. PDF. Topic. External links. Jodo Shu official website. Pure Land Buddhism official website.